I'm Aiden Livingston from Call to Action. This is David Trim from Russ Reed, and we are at NTC in San Francisco. Well, uh, Russ Reed uh, is uh, an ad agency that exclusively serves nonprofit uh, organizations, which is kind of weird. I'd never really, uh, you know, worked at that kind of place before, and uh, so every one of their every one of their clients is a nonprofit organization of some sort, but. Uh, it is the largest uh, direct marketer of any kind west of the Mississippi. Wow, that's amazing. See what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you started right. well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I that's can right. see you've been in this marketing business a long time. Yeah, well, let me, let me, let me give you another little piece. <laughs> know, uh, we, raise, uh, we raise about $3 million a day for our clients. Oh, really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that's it. That's what wow. I'm saying. So, yeah. Now, not that I do it all personally. Yeah, just, just, you, I'm just you know, machine, I do my part. $3 million. That's, that's all I'm saying. You are good on a phone. Well, <laughs> you know, whatever. Like ransom good on a phone. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> what do you find are the unique challenges of nonprofit versus for-profit? Okay, well, you know, first and foremost, I would say, when you're working in for-profit, your, your goal is to get someone to buy something from you and feel good about it, right? So in nonprofit, your goal is to get someone to just give you their money. They're not getting anything for it. They just have to feel good about just giving you your money. So there's no little you know, panini machine they get to go home with at the end of the day. There's no jacket they get to wear and go, mm. they just have to go, I just gave these people 50 bucks and I'm really happy about it. You know? So it's, it's an interesting challenge, right? You've, you've got to really make people consumers, clients, donors, whatever you want to call them, you've got to make them feel good about what they've done. And in nonprofit, it's not terribly hard to do because there's a lot of good stuff going on, you know, depending on the client. Um, but it's, it's a different kind of challenge. Not to, over, to grossly oversimplify this, but talk no, me okay. through a surface level of like, how does that go from first engagement and awareness to getting to that level of identifying with the cause? It, it's all about storytelling. You know, it's, it's well, you, you start off by trying to find out who the folks are, right? You, you, you always want to be walking in their shoes, right? You want, always want to talk to them uh, as one of them as much as you can, which is always a trick because, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a grandmother. Uh, I'm not a CEO. I'm not a teenager. And yet I've got to be able to talk to them, not necessarily pretending that I am one, but still in a sort of peer-to-peer -peer kind of way. One of the things David Ogilvy used to say that I love is uh, that uh, everything you sh every communication you do should be like you're sitting across the kitchen table from your best friend and you're just having this conversation saying, hey, there's this thing I got to tell you about. It's so cool. You know? And you got to come at it that way every time. Um, you know, so many of these causes are very need-driven. You know, you're helping to feed children or save animals and all that. So you do have to uh, get into the story and say, look, there's a real life problem here that you may or may not be aware of, but I know you are going to be someone who cares about this and you can make this huge difference uh, and you can be the hero of this story by giving 20 bucks today. Are there different platforms that are more appropriate for different levels of the engagement? Like is there, um, is text better for text giving, better for people who have been in the fold for a long time versus new people, or is email better for getting new people? Yeah. Or Facebook better for reaching awareness? Well, it's, you know, it's interesting because you can actually sort of draw it back to the, the old school models, you know, the, the meat world uh, kind of thing of print ads. Like, so there's magazine ads and there's newspaper ads, for instance. And uh, generally speaking, uh, historically, you know, magazine, I mean, you can have response mechanisms out of either one. But uh, typically what you see is that someone who is reading a magazine is a little further away from the buying decision. And so you've got to kind of give them a broader view and sort of romance them in a little bit more. But in the newspaper, you're saying, we're having a sale on cars this weekend. Come on down and we'll make a deal, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a much more sort of in-your-face uh, tactical engagement level. Well, so the same kind of things apply 
uh, in the online space because uh, you, can, you can use email as a way of getting to the engagement because uh, if you've done your job right and you've gone around and you've sort of uh, identified your audience and you've gotten to them, then you can, you can use that as sort of the point of getting them to the video, for instance, and then the giving. Whereas Facebook is a little bit further back, right? It's more like the magazine ad. You kind of step back a little and you go, well, you know, here's a good place to kind of learn more about the mission and what we're doing. And of course, there's a little way you could kind of go do something, you know, because again, uh, coming from, uh, you know, a history of direct marketing, and I know there's been a lot of sort of uh, conversation about this, but uh, where I come from, we believe that you, you always, always, always uh, allow for a way to respond and get engaged. Right? You don't ever, even in a newsletter, the kinds of things that you think of as not the hard sell things, and they're not, um, but you never miss an opportunity to say, eh, if you want to do something, you could. It's right here. As a, you know, you don't jam it down their throat. So yeah, I think, I think social media is, again, sort of more like the magazine model. It's kind of the step back. You know, let me tell you the story, let me get you involved, and hey, you may want to you may want to discuss this with some of your friends, you want to share, all that, and you have all the kind of one-on-one -on -one kind of aspects of it too. Uh, and it is it is the softer thing, and that's why I think there's so much um, uh, struggle about how you make uh, make those formats like social media work hard to deliver up fundraising. That is such an interesting, <laughs> it's, it's funny, so when, when we're doing this, every now and then there's an answer that's just like, oh my God, it's like, <laughs> I never thought of it that way, I, yeah. I swear this is not scripted, we did <laughs> not, that's such an interesting way to analogize, I've never thought of it that way, but you're right.